One thing I've discovered about Matt Powell is that they hate fun. If you enjoy Marvel or wizardry, you just need to grow up. Ironic, coming from someone that marvels at an invisible floating sky wizard. But today, Doormat is going to show how to share the gospel with someone, and it seems totally unscripted and real. Maybe it'll be enough to convert an atheist. Hello, I'm the Skeptic, the British floating circle that watches people make extraordinary claims and then explain why I don't accept what they're saying. Matt Powell, the transphobic young earth creationist, tends to say stupid stuff on the internet, but unlike some of my favourite content creators, his stupid stuff isn't that entertaining to me. And this week, we get to witness someone acting like Matt has converted them to his specific version of Christianity, with Matt's amazing performing skills. However, before we carry on, if this isn't your first Skeptic video, hit the like, the subscribe and the bell. That would be superb. And a super thanks to those that hit super thanks over the last few videos. Michael Surrency, District Driver, David Tyler, Sheldon McLaughlin, Dave Acid Punch Drunk, Scott Fleming, Phoenix King Theo, Ian Powell, Pete Rain, William M, Shane Shockley, Mr Grumblier, Chris Mountainay, The Tinfoil Freak and April Heron. Lisa the the rainbow giraffe bestows leaves upon you all. More hen. Before we fully start, can we just appreciate how staged this looks? There's totally not a camera in front of me. Maybe his direction was, look like you're watching a Marvel movie and you're completely bored with it. Grow up. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Doing well. What's your name? Jeremiah. What's your name? As in, we've never met before, right, Jeremiah? Jeremiah, Matt, nice to meet you. Welcome to Genesis Baptist. Um, do you go to church anywhere? Yes, I go to the Pentecostal Holiness Center down the street. Yeah, I go to church down the street, and yet I'm sitting in this church, ignoring a camera pointing right at me. Right on. Well, I'm glad you're here. Let me ask you an important question that I ask everybody that stops in here, and that's that if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? Oh, oh, let me answer first. No. Because I'm not convinced that heaven exists. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm a good person. Well, here's the thing. I, I think that it's good to be a good person. And the Bible tells us that we should be good people. But the Bible also says that there's one thing that we must do to be saved. And if you've got just a few minutes, I can show you what the Bible says on how to go to heaven. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I've already been paid to show up here today from a church down the street. Grow up. Oh. Sorry, Matt in the hat. So there's a few things that you have to understand in order to be able to receive salvation. And I guess the only way to understand it is with a condescending Powell thinking he's the one to tell you, like he was given the authority to do so. The Bible says here in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so all of us are sinners. All of us have done wrong in our lives. Well, so says a book. I've done things in my life that I definitely have done differently. But why should I care what the book thinks of the things I've done? It's a book. The only book I would care about is the Care of Magical Creatures book from the Harry Potter universe, since that one could actually do some physical damage, if it were real. And the Bible says over here in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Be bad, you get deaded. According to some words in a very old book, which essentially is putting quote unquote sins like murder and masturbation in the same vein. So the entire reason that we die is because we've committed sin. Or that our bodies get old and degrade over time. I mean, have you ever told a lie before? Yeah, I mean, hasn't everyone? Right. I mean, I've lied before. Everybody's lied before. And if you say that you haven't lied, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> that is so funny. Who wrote this script? It's terrible. I mean, Matt's not mine. Well, okay, maybe mine too. So here's the thing. The Bible says here in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, and notice this, it says, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Does anyone remember those choose your own adventure books where you could pick what happened by turning to page whatever or a different route on another page? That's what's going on here, right? Matt's taking one verse and then jumping to a completely different verse to back it up, which would suggest he knows the entire Bible, which in turn would mean he knows about the verses with killing babies and mistreating slaves. How comes he never mentions those? So here's the thing. Like I said, we have all committed sin. We have all lied. And the Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is 
the second death. And so because we're sinners, that's what we deserve is eternal punishment. If you've done wrong, surely it'd be better to be sat down, talked to about what you did wrong, why it happened, and what you can do to not let it happen again. Instead of, you ate shellfish, death to you. And why does a god get to choose what is right and wrong? If you take out the eternal reward or eternal punishment, which can't be proven anyway, why do you need to worry about it? Really? You just end up with some random dude's opinion. Now, do you think God wants anybody to go to hell? Of course not. Right. I mean, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, as you know, to this earth. The Bible says that he was God manifest in the flesh. The Bible says that he was basically God with skin on. And Jesus went around doing many miracles. He raised people from the dead. He healed the sick. And Jesus would always tell the truth. And that's the reason why they actually nailed him to the cross is because Jesus spoke the truth so powerfully and so completely that they just hated him so much for it. Have you ever noticed in the world today, if you tell the truth to anybody, sometimes they get really offended? Some folks have made a career out of telling the truth and offending other people because of it. All the time. All the time. So when they nailed Jesus to the cross, it wasn't because Jesus was some hate monger. It's because he told the truth. And sometimes the truth is considered hate to those who hate the truth. Thus describes the relationship between young earth creationists and how they feel about as they would say, evolutionists. And that's why they crucified our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus died, they took his body down. And then what happened three days later? He He rose rose again. Right, he rose again from the dead. It's important to point out that this is how the story goes. It's like describing when Bilbo met three trolls and they turned to stone, but making out like it actually happened IRL. And the Bible says that when he was on the cross, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Which could actually mean anything. Because it sure as heck doesn't mean anything to me. So every sin I've ever done, every sin you've ever done, it was as if Jesus had done it. You know, he's being punished in our place for our sins. And so, like I said, he's a substitute lamb. He was the one who came and took our sins upon his own shoulders on that cross and bear them in his own body, as the Bible says. Even with Matt's sultry, lispy tones, this book sounds dull, dull, dull. So in order to be saved, the only thing that you have to do is simply receive the gift of eternal life. And the Bible says, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So this guy is asking, what do I need to do to go to heaven? And they responded with, they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But what if you see no reason to believe because there's nothing that convinces you? Is that your fault or the fault of the God for not making it more obvious? Or could it be that the God doesn't exist and you're just reading words in a book that has lost a lot of credibility over the thousands of years it's been around? But don't you have to turn over a new leaf for works? It's funny you should say that, Jeremiah, since if ever there's a moment in your life you feel like you could do better, you think about Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe, leaf be upon her, and she will help you turn over a new leaf with no judgment or anything. Jeremiah sounds like he would benefit from giraffism. Well, here's the thing. The Bible says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Bloody hell. The Bible has some really random sentences thrown together. What was it he said again? To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. What? That makes zero sense. How can you live your life by words that have no meaning? The Bible says right here, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Look, it's a gift. So again, using a choose-your-own-adventure and using a completely different Bible verse to explain a Bible verse. If you're having to find meaning in the words, rather than seeing it immediately, surely things can be misinterpreted very easily. If I said, Jeremiah, I want you to have this Bible as a free gift, but you've got to clean my house, all of a sudden it's no longer a free gift, right? You're right. Because you worked for it. What if I said, I'm willing to give you this Bible, free gift from me to you, however, you got to come back to church here every Sunday morning. Is that a free gift? No, it wouldn't be. I'm absolutely willing to buy some Bibles and give them to Matt in exchange for them cleaning my house. However, I will make them wear some kind of maid outfit. It may cost me an extra Bible, but it'll be totally worth it. Right, it wouldn't be. It would be a work at that point. You'd be earning this. The Bible says that salvation is by faith and faith alone, trusting Christ and what he did on the cross. What he did on the cross? You mean bleeding to death? Sorry, you mean bleeding until taken down and sleeping off a hangover before waking up and saying, April Fools, I'm not dead, yo, three days later. Should we turn over a new leaf? Absolutely. I think that we should do good works. But the Bible says that in order to be saved, you simply have to trust Christ. 
That is it. That is the simplicity of salvation. And if you're trusting your works, half your works, half of what Jesus did on the cross, or even 99% Christ and 1% you, you're being a co-savior with Christ. I'm half expecting a cow to walk past in the background because the amount of bullshit being spoken right now start out at 50 50 but actually why not go 99 1 i'm not entirely sure what that could mean trusting christ i'm not even bothered if christ was a real person who was just convinced that they could hear voices i just watch all that play out between mythicists and non-mythicists and that's pride it's it's pride to say that our goodness has something to do with getting us to heaven when the bible tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Is it also pride to think that a God will help you find your keys when they go missing, rather than helping those who actually need it? The Bible says there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So what? The Hunger Games says, and may the odds be ever in your favor. Where does that get us? There are many people in the Bible that committed terrible sins. There was a battle at Helm's Deep where over 10,000 Urukai were killed, along with almost 1,000 elves and men. <laughs> this is fun, picking out things from books. I should do this more often. Yet they went to heaven. How? Because they were so good? No, it's because they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Their sins were forgiven. By that logic, if there was a heaven, which I'm not saying there is, I might be able to go there because I'm not fussed either way if there was once a man called Jesus that got nailed to a cross. If the only way to get to heaven is to believe that there was once a dude who thought he could speak to an undemonstrated, unknowable, bearded sky man, then sure, he may well have believed that. And I guess now, I'm in. So wait a minute. You're saying that I could be this horrible, evil person and I could commit suicide and still be saved and go to heaven? What a random, random question. Well, here's the thing. On the Pentecostal Church's website, they state that if you die in suicide or die in sin, that you're going to lose your salvation. But here's the thing. Saul in the Bible committed suicide. The Bible says the Holy Spirit departed from him. God became his enemy. The kingdom was delivered to David. Yet the Bible tells us that King Saul is in heaven right now. The Bible also says that Samson, who also committed suicide, is in heaven right now. It's not because he was a good person. It's because the blood of Christ covers all sin when somebody receives the gift of salvation. In other words, why bother wasting time going to church? Why bother giving some of your earnings to a tax evading company? Why bother caring about whether there is or isn't a God? By this logic, if you just accept that Jesus thought he was the son of Sky Daddy... You are saved. Who cares what benefits you and the rest of our species? Some words in a book say you're covered in 2,000-year-old blood, which in itself is pretty gross, and you're going to live on forever. See how stupid that sounds? Once you're saved, if you do commit sin, let's say you are a horrible person, God is going to punish you on this earth. It's not a license to get away with sin. Once you're saved, you cannot get away with sin because God is going to constantly be punishing you. He's going to constantly be chastening you, but he will never cast you out. When has that ever happened. If you do something bad and you get caught and punished, that's a human justice system. Do the crime, do the time. Learn and try not to do it again. Maybe just turn over a new leaf. Because whosoever liveth and believeth in Christ shall never die. You might want to tell that to all the believers that are now dead. And so that's one of the things that you have to believe in order to be saved, is that salvation is an eternal gift of God. Look at what Jesus said here in John 5, 24. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath, what? Everlasting life. Now, what is everlasting life? Life that goes forever, right? Yeah. Which technically is impossible because we haven't been around forever. So... So here's the thing. If you have everlasting life right now, and then you lose that gift of eternal life, was it ever eternal to begin with? Great question, Matthew. Great question. Was it? I'd have to say no. Right, because you lost it. Eternal life, never-ending life, everlasting life, by definition, goes forever. So if Jesus said the moment that you trust him as your Savior, you, you receive the gift of God, you have eternal life. No matter what, you cannot lose that because it is by definition eternal. Jesus, when he died, he said, it is finished. The Bible says that if it be of grace, then it is no more work. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And the color purple says time moves slowly, but passes quickly. And if it be of work, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Salvation is either by faith or works. And the only way to go to heaven is by eliminating all of your pride and all of your self-trust and relying only on what Jesus did on the cross. Nailed it. <laughs> See what I did there, Matt? <laughs> because he, he got nailed on a cross. <clears throat> but also, it's either by faith or works, but actually only by believing what Jesus did on the cross. So which is it? Because now you've given three ways. Maybe read your script back before saying it out loud. If you trust him, Jesus says right here, 
Whoso cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Actually, it looks like John said that Jesus said it, not Jesus himself. And didn't he write it decades after Jesus had supposedly died? What if he wasn't actually there? What if he misremembered? What if it was all made up? He also says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So you see how salvation's a one-time thing? You come to Jesus Christ, you eat of the bread of life, which he gives you, you receive that free gift, and the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. But only if you believe, which doesn't make it free anymore, considering what you said earlier. The Bible says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, check this out, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Not thou might be saved, thou shalt be saved. Does he keep opening to the same part of this book? And great, a book saying something will happen without proving it to be the case. So what? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy says that the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is 42. It doesn't say could be, it says is. So now maybe God is the number 42. The Bible says a few verses later, for whosoever, that's you and I, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved not might be saved, shall be saved. So in order to be saved, you need to reject what the Pentecostal church taught you and receive the free gift of eternal life. Some people will say that you've got to turn over a new leaf and do all these wonderful works, but they're trusting in themselves. They're not trusting in Jesus. Look at the confusion on this guy's face. I'm with you, Jeremiah. He's not making any sense. He's just saying words out loud. God said in the Old Testament, look unto me, ye ends of the earth, and be ye saved. For I am God, and there is none else. All you have to do is look. Look and live, my brother, live. I mean, I think of the the serpent in the wilderness. Moses lifted up the serpent. All the people had to do was look, and they lived. It was that simple. Probably because they weren't the ones holding the snake. It's as simple as drinking a glass of water, or eating a piece of bread, or even opening a door and walking through it. Jesus himself said that I am the door. If any man enter in by me, he shall be saved. He was a carpenter, right? Being a door sounds completely plausible. Uh, But I guess having a door nailed to a cross and then that same door walking out of a cave three days later would have less impact. The most famous verse in the entire Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's everlasting life. And all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust him as your savior. And once you do that, you receive the gift of eternal life. Blah, 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 spoons, blah, 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 swordfish, blah, blah, blah. Ten house points to anyone that gets that reference. And essentially, that is all Matt just said. You'll never die. So, Jeremiah, do you believe everything that I just shared with you from the Bible today? I do. Well, amen. Well, if you'd like to, uh, you could simply receive that gift right now simply by calling upon the name of the Lord and asking him to give you eternal life. Would you like to do that right now? Yes. Hang on, we don't get to hear him say it after all that? And what on earth are these words? Well, I would definitely change those up. Dear Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe, leaf be upon you. I know that I'm a human. I know that I should probably try to live the best life I can. I believe that rainbows are a sign that light rays hit water droplets and produce rainbows. I don't need belief in a deity to do good things, which is just how Lisa wants it. Probably. I like rainbows. More hen. Much better. (laughs) Apparently, according to the pinned comment under the video, there'll be more videos like this for Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Hindus, etc. But not one for atheists. That's interesting. What did you think of this randomly performed skit? It had to be a skit, right? Do you remember Choose Your Own Adventure books? Are you going to heaven after accepting that there maybe was a man that thought he was sent by Godfrey to make tables and hang door frames? Let me know in the section below. I'm going to skeptic this as Matt Powell needing scripting lessons. A big thank you to this month's ticks on Patreon, MISM, Addy Rockart, The Enixes, Travis, Elizabeth, Jukari, and the absolute lunatic Jimmy, as well as all the base ticks. You can become a supporter on Patreon too at patreon.com com slash the skeptic the link is in the description along with links to all my other socials don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already from me the skeptic stay safe keep thinking logically and ask questions skepticism is the first step towards truth see you next saturday 